Where your morning starts, make sure to look around for the right company to serve you everything you need to know about what's happening around you. That's why you need VOP this morning, because we will climb this far to give you a voice in what's going on from news, reviews, politics and the economy, sports and even entertainment. Join us weekdays, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. right here on VOP TV. VOP TV. Now you have more than a voice. Now, Nigeria's annual inflation rate rose to 24.0% in July from 22.79% in the previous month, and that is according to the National Bureau of Statistics. Now, the statistics office said the July 2023 inflation rate showed an increase of 1.29 percent points when compared to June 2023 headline inflation rate. The NBS said on a year-on-year -year basis, the headline inflation rate was 4.44 percent points, higher compared to the rate recorded in July 2022, which was 19.64 percent. This shows that the headline inflation rate year-on-year -year basis increased in July 2023 when compared to the same month in the preceding year, that is July 2022. Now, it said still, of course, for us to actually continue this conversation, like we introduced to you earlier, Nick Agule and John Akirili. Nick and John, thank you for staying with us. On the second segment, we want to look at uh, inflation now 24 0.03%. And this is the highest recorded in 10 years. Is it any surprise to you? I will start in with John Akirili. Is it any surprise to you that inflation is recording this high, considering the current economic realities? Thank you, Esther. I, I think for me, I'm, I'm not surprised. I, I saw it coming, and I was even expecting something higher. And uh, this, is, this is my point. You know, um, I've always been saying in different fora, that inflation will always be a problem and inflation is a bigger problem for us as a country. And that for any serious government that really cares about the welfare of its people, must always look at can help food inflation. Now, food inflation talks about your agricultural sector, your industry, you know, and your petroleum industry. Because you can't take transportation in the logistical chain chain of agriculture and if you take that out then it's there is a problem so then let me give you a, a clear case study why there's a problem now most states in the southern part of the of, of, of the country do produce um talk of your Lagos, talk of your uh, your or uh, you no know? but most of what we consume in the south comes from the north talk of your tomatoes your watermelon your system seed and all of grains, you know. Now, cost of transportation from the north to the south is crazy. Mind you, they use big lorries, you know, and J5 kind of vehicle. And all of these are diesel, you know, kind of vehicle. They, the diesel consume, consuming vehicles. Now, what is the price of diesel in the market? Now, mind you, these guys travel from state to state, so they are going to buy diesel at different prices from the northern part of the country which is even way higher compared to the price in the south. Now, when they bring this food produce to the south, you see that they need to bring all of the cost of into their, um, their calculations before they can arrive at a selling price, even with their profit added to it. Now, when they come at the selling price, you see that the selling price is always on the high side. So what happens is that, is it that there is an increased price or if the price is not increased, the quantity is divided into two. So if you are buying five pieces of tomato before for 200, now it can be three pieces of tomatoes for 200, okay? Or five pieces for 400 or for 350, depending on how they are able to. So that is what is bringing the cost of food inflation in country because food inflation accounts for over 70%. If inflation figures you talk about 24.08, food inflation is actually a problem. And I think for us as a people, I, we have been saying this, it's not just about you sharing grains to farmers. It goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. 
Agriculture is it's, it's, it's a hub on its own. Look at the value chain and see how you can help one. How you can help ease logistics in terms of transportation of food produce from the northern belt to the southern belt easily and faster. Two, how you can help reduce food wastage. Three, storage capacity. Four, in terms of linking agricultural produce to industries. So when you want to cite your industries, how do you just, and you know, you look for raw materials and then you're trying to raw materials to other industries. So I think for, for anybody who is, you know, sound in economics, you understand that for you to have a good industry or industrialization process, you must have nearness to raw materials. So if you are like, um, um, you are producing a fruit, maybe a juice, then you should have, if it's pineapple juice, you should have a pineapple plantation and have your factory so they're close to the plantation so that you can, you, you the cost for your production and then your selling price will be minimally lower. And that is how we can, you know, bring down the issue of food inflation in the country, you know, and how we can help farmers smile to the bank more. Another thing again we should do to help food inflation is that we need to encourage more participation of people in this sector. Everybody who cares to listen, I will always say that even if people eat, so agricultural sector happens to be the only sector that for me is guaranteed all time, all time guaranteed for creating jobs for people, for bringing food to the table of people, and also, you know, ensuring a healthy lifestyle so we can have healthy people. And that's the way I think we should go as a people. All right, then. Okay. Uh, Nick, let me, let me ask you this one. Now, um, Nick? You stay with us? Yes, I'm here. Oh, great. Um, with the state of emergency you declared by, by um, you know, the, by, uh, the um, pr um, pr 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 president, and we've seen food prices rising, continuing to rise above the reach of the common man, what do you think the problem is? You see, let us not... Uh be approaching these matters with without any plan. Uh, it, 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 this is not a situation where uh, five loaves of bread are transformed to feed 5,000 men. <laughs> uh, it, it, of a state of emergency will not add to the food supply in Nigeria if certain steps are not taken. So let us ask ourselves the question, what is causing the food supply shortage in Nigeria today? These are the factors. Number one, millions of farmers have been driven away from their farms and they are in RTP camps all over the nation, all over the nation. So if President Tinubu's government wants to solve food shop sufficiency uh, issues in Nigeria, that's where he needs to start. He needs to read the riot act to his security chiefs to say, clear Nigeria of bandits, of marauders, of terrorists, so that the farmers can return back to their farms and start producing food. Number two, the farmers, even if they are to their lands, are using manual labor to farm. They are using manual labor to farm. These farmers need to be empowered with machines. What we have been telling our farmers to do is to trek from Lagos to Abuja with their bare feet. If we give them cars, if we give them machines, the cars will take them to Abuja in quicker time, in more efficient time, in less stressful way. So instead of these people bending down, we go and cut last farming. If we give them machines, they will do this farming more easily and produce a lot more. A farmer that is now producing three to five bags of rice from his manual labor can produce 500 bags of rice. Machines. This is what we are saying. And if we bring in irrigation, because Nigeria so, I mean, God so loves Nigeria. 
every community in Nigeria, there's a river nearby. I don't think there's any community in Nigeria that you need to go five kilometers before you see a, a river. If we those rivers, we will get irrigation for all year round farming. We will get proper, we will get uh, uh, potable water, fresh water. We will get uh, tourism and we will get fishing by damming a single river. That is, that is number two. Number three, what the farmers produce, even with annual labor today, a chunk of it is lost through post-harvest losses because there are no processing facilities when they produce this thing. I can, you know, I'm from Benue State. You need to go to Benue to see the quantum of fruits, oranges, bananas, uh, mangoes that ripe on the tree and nobody touches it, they are they are rot. Because there are no transportation facilities to bring them out to the market. Neither are there processing facilities to have and preserve their shelf life. You know, so the next thing is that a farmer who goes to the bank now to borrow, the bank is going to face him with 30% interest rate on any loan they give him. At 30% interest rate, there's no business that is going to survive with that kind of uh, this thing. And we have spoken about this. Even President Tinubu himself identified it. In his inaugural speech, he said, look, I am going to cut interest rates down to single digit. But what are his watch? The central bank sat in the Mon Monetary Policy Committee meeting and increased the interest rate. So we are fighting a push inflation with demand pool inflation policies. And so for me, just Opening mouth and saying we declare state of emergency in um, in the food sector means nothing. Okay. This fundamental matter. Otherwise, there will be no food on it. All right then, uh, John. Now, John, let me let me take you to a news that broke yesterday. Yesterday, we 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 heard that uh, rice mills in Kano were closing shop mm -hmm. over scarcity of paddy. Uh, what does <laughs> what does this portend? You know, John. Moses. Moses. Yes. You please. see, when when I talk on different fora, they say John likes to talk, but I will continue to talk because it, it's my love for the country and for the people. Mm. Now, let me take you aback. Maybe you remember that a few months ago, the former president launched a rice feeder meet in Abuja. Oh yes. And we were told that that is just 0.05 of what is in the stock in the barn, not on the farmland, in the barn, that's in the storage facility. And, you know, along that line also, Lagos State, you know, opened one of the biggest, if not the biggest in the whole of Africa, you know, a, a, a rice milling factory. But I asked a question, and I said, if truly this administration, that's the uh, uh, True. was really serious, then this rice party should have, you know, been distributed to different rice milling factories, be processed, and then let it flow the market. I went to my 12 markets in Lagos. I couldn't find that rice there because I was thinking rice would even be reduced by that time, but it's not. So now that rice party is not even found in Kano, that tells you the reality on ground. We, said, we spoke about it before, that this is just a media IP. And if you check most of the rice party they are in pyramid, I, not rice. But you cannot you can only hide you know the truth for a while after you have to come out. So what happened to the rice pyramid that was showcased in Abuja? I think I don't have any issue against the Mayfield, but on this case of rice pyramid, you should answer questions. What happened to the rice pyramid? Where are the rice party? Which which milling, which which milling factory, you know, actually processed those rice paddy? And which market did they send them to? All across the federation. These are questions we should ask. All right. So all you right, see right. now that okay. this thing, this thing that they, they, they are talking about is coming back. Now, apart from the fact that that is of one angle which we must just point out for the mm -hmm. government to know, the other aspect is that what is even the strength rice producing region in Nigeria? We only focus on the northern part that they produce rice. And we also focus on the southeastern part, you know, I Abakaliki rice in a boy. 
And that is also a, a very good hub that can produce large chunk of rice. What the government and the state government doing in that and I said it, we can have good competition in agricultural produce. Benue is known for yam mm -hmm. and Notuko, you can get good fish. You know, Abia State has land that is good for rice plantation. And but you know, Abia State is not there to plant more rice, has become a hub of uh, ESN and uh, the likes where they do all sort of shenanigans saying that they must be released. And also, the thing that I think the, the people and the government are not really serious in terms of agricultural revolution. Okay. So what I think they should do is that each state that has the capacity to plant rice, irrespective of rice that you can plant, go ahead and plant in abundance. And that is where, even if you don't have the processing plant, then the government can, or private individuals can now set up processing plants in these hubs. And then when the rice comes from the, from the farm, it gets to the mill, it's been processed and bagged, and then it's sent to the market. So in that area, you see that we have created a lot of jobs in that chain. That's All right, John. So John, it's John, like John. Money in the system. Okay, John, yes, thank like you. Day. Thank you, John. Uh, Nick, we, we're running out of time. We need to get yeah. into another segment. Uh, Nick, can you hear me? Nick, yes, I can hear you. All right, Nick, this uh, question is for you. Uh, the economic problems confronting the Nigerian economy is calling for considerate selection of a leader who has the broad view of the problems and is able to possess the capacity to remedy the peaceful economic situation in the country. Uh, how do you think the president can broaden his view? And how quick can he select individuals that can help push the economy forward? as soon as possible. I think my co-panelist John hit the nail on the head. I, I think uh, President Tinubu has been in Nigeria, has been a governor, has watched Nigeria slide down, and he knows exactly Brexit. I think what he's doing is political will, his political courage, to do the right thing, to take the right decisions. As I speak today, I cannot phantom how the group managing director of the NMPC is still in his job. That is the man who has superintended over dead refining. That is the man who has superintended over the subsidy scam. That is the man who has superintended over uh, uh, the importation of products and the scarcity criteria that has happened. How can that man still be in his job how many months into office? So it's about political will. If if the president has the political will, he has the courage, he knows exactly what to do and he can tackle it. So for me, that is my conclusion of the matter. President uh, Tinubu needs to show courage in his governance and then Nigeria's problems will be solved. All right, then. Thank you very much, Nika Gule. And also, uh, John uh, Akirili, for staying with us on the program. We totally appreciate your contribution. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, so we'll be going to Thank business you. now as we uh, make our way to other segments of the show. After business will be entertainment and then sports. Now, from the world of business, we have uh, these stories. Oil marketers have advised President Bola Tinubu to gradually relax the removal of subsidy on premium motor spirit, popularly called petrol, following the inability of importers to access the United States dollars and the impact which this uh, was having on businesses. Now, this came as Tinubu ruled out fuel price hike and reversal of fuel subsidy. However, marketers of petroleum products encouraged the president to learn from Kenya, stressing that the African country had to return subsidy on petrol to curb the devastating impact which its removal had on Kenyans. Now, some dealers had stated that subsidy on petrol would gradually creep in should the NNPCL continue to sell at 617 naira a litre, particularly if the rise in forex rate persists. The National Public Relations Officer, Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, Chief Chinedu Ukadike, noted that the outright removal of subsidy 
would cause severe hardship. All right. Now we we'll move away from, from this to another business story. The federal government may sell stakes in about 20 state-run companies to raise funds and improve governance in the entities. According to the chief executive officer at the Ministry of Finance, Incorporated, Armstrong Takang, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation is among the firms the government may sell a stake in. He stated that the agency is considering options, including strategic sales and initial public offerings, and aims to implement the plan within 18 months. He noted that uh, some of the entities need the private sector to take control in shares, and the major consideration for the government is to create value rather than re retain control. Now, these sales may coincide with President Bola Tinubu's plan to reform the country's economy. Takang also stated that the agency is in the process of appointing consultants, including valuers, financial advisors, lawyers, bankers, and others to handle different aspects of the transaction. So apparently, uh, that seems to be something that is already in motion. Oh, well, is that what Nigerians want? The sale of these companies? NNPCL being one of them. Oh, well, those are, those, those are the business stories that we have for you. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll get into entertainment. And yes, we'll get into entertainment. All right, stay with us.